All right, I'll say, how are you all this evening of your time as you create time to exist? Fine. Are you all alive? Yes. Well, thank you very much. We will begin this interaction this evening of your time with the following entitlement. Unconditional love. And if you wish, a parenthetical title. The Unconditional Love Boat. <laughs> Allow me to begin on the following note. First of all, understand, you are all made, you are all created from, if you will, the white light of infinite creation. And if you were to ascribe, perhaps, an emotionality to this light, it would truly be ecstasy, unconditional love. God, or what we prefer to call all that is, always by definition, expresses unconditional love. And therefore, your very existence in the way that you define yourself to be is an expression of such unconditional love. Now, because you are, and in fact have, within your biblical literature the saying that you are made in the image and likeness of God, the idea is that you are able at any timing to express an equality of all that is, or God. Therefore, if all that is can express unconditional love, so can you. Allow us to delineate, or shall we say, discriminate between your idea of conditional love and unconditional love. Unconditional love means I love you or love whatever, no matter what. Nothing can tread upon the depth and breadth of that love. Conditional love is, if you do this, I will love you. If you don't, you stink. <laughs> so the idea is that you can, if you wish, choose to not bring it to the you stink stage. You can establish your preference. You can establish whether a particular idea, a particular person relates to you if you prefer it, but in no way, shape, or form, if it does not relate to you or you do not prefer it, need you invalidate it. You can validate all ideas. Validation need not mean condone things you do not prefer, but the idea of validating it is understanding that it is also a creation and your willingness to use any portion of it to your own service is truly validation. Even if it is so foreign to your way of thinking that it allows you to realize you don't agree with a bit of it, it has been of service to you, for it has allowed you to define yourself still further. And self-definition, self-awareness, expanding consciousness, are one of, shall we say, the byproducts of your particular style of evolution of consciousness. Therefore, again, all that is, is made of unconditional love. And because you are all expressions of all that is, and of unconditional love, all that is will always love you, no matter what you do. Now, we are not saying this to give you license to run amok, no. We are mentioning this because, again, being part and parcel of all that is, it simply goes to reason that all that is truly, always, unconditionally loves itself. Which brings us to the next issue. All that is will love you, again, no matter what. Unconditionally. Because, as we have just said, all that is unconditionally loves itself, his or herself, if you prefer. Therefore, the notion arises that you may, if you wish, treat yourself with that same respect. Unconditionally love yourself. What this means, again, in your vernacular, is if you screw up according to your own standards, that need not mean that you berate yourself, or shall we say, insult yourself, or feel guilty or worthless. You can, we need not tell you that. 
but you can also take, shall we say, ideas that you have performed that you find to be most unpreferential and utilize them as a lesson. The true expression of your willingness to accept it as a lesson will be expressed in your willingness when those circumstances come about again to simply not do the same thing you wished you hadn't done in the first place. This restores balance. This allows you to use all your creations, even the ones that perhaps seem to slip out there by mistake. You can learn from it all. And your willingness to glean from all the creations you have created within your reality gives you, shall we say, your ability to create your reality according to preference back under your own auspice. Again, you always create your own reality 100%. However, you either do so consciously or unconsciously. The way to allow those unconscious creations to transform to conscious preferences is to not deny them and in fact use them. Use it all. When you are using creations you do not seem to prefer, you are now consciously re-creating them. And it will always be your option to take anything that comes along that you formally labeled bad. And rather than what is most obviously negative about it, begin to be a bit more creative and see any way can be very small, can be very large, any way that it serves you. One, shall we say, pointer or perhaps approach that we have suggested to members of your society is very simple and goes as follows. When something seems to be happening within your life that you do not prefer, there is a tendency in your society for individuals to say something to the effect of, why is this happening to poor little old me? Now we understand that notion and we understand that it can seem that it is happening to you. But it always happens from you. And when you create that it seems to be happening to you, you are creating that. Therefore, you are still in the driver's seat. When you seem to rely on that approach, why is this happening to me? You can simply change to the following approach, the following phrase. And if you will be honest with yourself, this will always be of assistance to you. How does this serve me exactly as it is? I understand what it does not allow me to do, but what does it allow me to do? What must I believe in order to attract such a reality? that I no longer prefer. This simple approach allows you to become a conscious creator and express your willingness to unconditionally love yourself, not think you've blown it, and use all your creations. When you use what you consider to be the worst of what is left in your life, and glean some positive service, some positive idea from it, it transforms. For all situations, all events, all relationships are simply symbols of ideas, physicalized. And therefore the idea is, when you get the message from any symbol that you do create within your reality, within your life, it transforms. If you do not allow yourself to glean the positive message, it seems to come back and repeat over and over and over and over again. This is only an apparency, for you truly do create your reality anew in every given moment, but it does appear that way. So if you are ascribing a particular label to something which you feel is quite negative in your life and it still seems to be coming around, guess again. That is not the main idea. For there are truly, by definition, simply think about it, no pointless or extraneous creations in existence. If something exists, it exists. It belongs. By definition, nothing slips in there. You can create the apparency that something does slip in there, 
but then you do not put yourself in the appropriate orientation to glean from it, to use it in a positive way. The expression of your willingness to unconditionally love yourself will be in action. All right, cutting yourself some slack in this regard. So therefore, understand, all that is feels you deserve to exist. You did not have to do anything for this deservability. You do have the ability to deserve deservability. Therefore, treat yourself with the same respect as all that is does. And you will begin to transform the life from what you say you do not prefer to that which you say you do. Your ability to unconditionally love others will always only be proportional to your own willingness to allow your already existing ability to unconditionally love yourself. You have the expression, love others as you love yourself. But we realize this presupposes that you do love yourself. And therefore, you will only have the degree of ability to love others as you will allow yourself to love yourself by using your creations, even the stinky ones. That is what will allow them to transform. We are very interestingly now together within what you have labeled a psychic cruise. And the idea of this ability, psychic ability, truly stems from the ability on some level to express unconditional love. From our perspective, Perhaps a better terminology than telepathy for what is occurring in these quote-unquote psychic affairs would be tell empathy. For the idea is you feel as the other individual and in an empathic way, which, by the way, is an expression of unconditional love. So therefore... You can always attune yourself to the vibration of another by your willingness to identify with them in unconditional love. That willingness will always allow you to have a slightly broadened, enhanced understanding of another individual. You have a saying, to know them is to love them. What I am suggesting is that to love them is to know them. Therefore, in general, psychic ability will go through, roughly speaking, three phases. First of all, communication in that way will always take place along the path of least resistance. What this means is if someone is asking a psychic what I have had for breakfast this morning, they already know that. And therefore, the path of least resistance is their knowingness. Perhaps, when a psychic is reading, as you say, a particular individual, not always will they receive these images mentally, as you say. The path of least resistance sometimes may simply be visually. A person may say, well, I am thinking of a number. What is that number? And the psychic may look at the clock and see the number seven. That was the path of least resistance. If the psychic trusts that path and is strongly inclined in that way to understand the synchronicity of the situation, that is an example of which I speak. Number two will always be the desire, the need, in a sense, the trust on the part of the psychic. In general, the psychic does not care what you had for breakfast or what is your favorite number. And the idea is they know you can tell them anyway. So phrasing in the form of a challenge shuts the door, shuts the mechanism. And the idea is 
the desire, the emotional desire on the part of both parties is truly the conduit through which psychic ability is transferred. Emotion, energy, motion. This is what, shall we say again, activates the mechanism. Thirdly is the idea of preconceived notions. Many individuals who claim to be assessing the validity of psychic ability already don't believe in such a thing. Therefore, many of your experts have, shall we say, a pre-existing bias, and in a sense, their attitude is, prove it. And again, that is not open and unconditional love and exchange that shuts down the door. The exchange of mental ideas is just that, a loving, identifying exchange. Therefore, summing up what we have said, you can begin in that way to hone in on your own psychic ability by your willingness to begin to identify as and not simply with individuals that you are interacting with. When you in any sense synchronize your vibration, your attitude, your emotions with another individual and allow yourself to unconditionally love them, you set up the conducive atmosphere for such ideas. From our estimation, in approximately your 3,000 year, your entire civilization will be tell empathic. But that does not mean that individuals cannot begin at any time. You are still exploring verbal communication. It is a form of the limited type of physicality that you are exploring. Self-imposed limitation. There are no limits imposed upon you. But there are certain advantages to the limitations that you have chosen within this reality. So understand again, it all boils down to unconditional love. When you find yourself conditionally loving individuals, that gives you the opportunity, as we had earlier spoke, to use all your creations. If you are judging another, the same thing applies that applied for the unconditional love. You will only judge others in so much and to the same proportion to which you are willing to judge yourself. Therefore, invalidate yourself so you can begin to use any instance of doing these ideas to your advantage by again when something comes along that you do that you feel is most unpreferential. Using it, ask yourself, what must I believe in order to be judging this individual or judging myself? Be honest with yourself. Your actions always result from your belief systems. Therefore, the first step, most obviously, would be to get in touch with what you already believe. And paradoxically, anyway, you cannot change what you already believe till you will first own it, till you will first acknowledge that you believe it. This is quite simple with the beliefs you have that you prefer to have. Oh, I have those beliefs. I am oh so very proud. Yes, I'll admit it. But when a belief comes along that you sort of wish you didn't have, these are the beliefs we are speaking about. These are the bottom line remnants, the last vestiges of emotionalities arising from belief systems which limit you from what you say you prefer in your life. So therefore, when you are happy and things are going all well and good, have a good time. When things do not seem to be going good, you can understand, if you wish, the joy in realizing it's an opportunity. An opportunity to transform beliefs that you have that you do not prefer. Again, something comes along you don't prefer. Ask yourself, what must I believe to be creating it? Well, I must believe this. Oh my goodness, I do believe that. 
Don't prefer that, but I do believe it. Okay, oh joy. I've at least acknowledged that I believe it. Now I can change it. By hiding it and denying it, I locked it away from my ability to change it. Now I have acknowledged it, admitted it, validated it. You have now equalized it to any other belief. Simply, in order to now change or transform to that which you prefer, now that you've nailed down the belief that you have, state the new belief. Using your imagination, conjure up how you would truly feel. For as we have said, emotions are the activating mechanism. How you would truly feel if you did have that new belief. Get into it. Use all your senses in your imagination. And then the third step is to use that same imagination while you have it out and running to picture what a person who already believed that would do in this same situation. If they already believe that, I can assume they would do something different from what you are about to do. When you allow yourself the opportunity to see what that new action would be, you will love it. For it is an expression of the you you say you desire to be. Then simply once you have conjured up that image, be willing to mimic it. Do what you see in your imagination and individual doing who already has that belief. Therefore, you have stated, seen the new belief, allowed yourself to muster up how it would feel, you've felt the new belief, then simply act on the new belief. See it, feel it, be it. This is what you already do with the e. beliefs you do not prefer. You see them on some level, perhaps unconsciously, but you feel them. They make you, or you say they make you feel a particular way. And then you will act as an individual who has those old limiting beliefs. You already do this is what I am saying. So there is nothing new to learn. It is just a matter of the conscious application of what you already do just swimmingly. Pun intended. The idea, therefore, is you are expressions of all that is. You are expressions of unconditional love. You are always, 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 only unconditionally loved by all that is. Treat yourself with the same respect and you will get the same effect. Therefore, because of, shall we say, the limited time span of this particular interaction, I will stop at this point. I will thank you all for your willingness to cruise through your reality and for your willingness to open up to other portions of your consciousness. For this is truly an expansion, both individually, microcosmically, as you say, and your mass consciousness or macrocosmically. There is an expansion taking place. You are within a transformational age upon your planet. You may call it from old age to new age. Does not matter what you call it. It is happening en masse. You are seeing, shall we say, reflections of it in your society, in your media, in your world scenario. You are moving truly into a golden age. But understand that you will only see that external reflection. Only see that external reflection. When you first, on some level, have made the internal decision, the internal commitment, the internal validation. Therefore, you are doing very well. And there are, shall we say, again, many signs in your society of the transformation. Things, perhaps, which you've never thought you would see in your life. Believe me, if you wish, you don't have to. This is only the beginning. 
for your willingness to interact with us in this way. Again, I thank you unconditionally and ask you now, how may I be of service to you? Shetty, uh, yes. Sorry, I have a question. One moment, can you speak up? Be bold so that all may share. Perhaps use your microphone. Okay, I want to say hello. And to you. I have a question that every time I come to one of these interactions or I'm in this virtual, this virtual environment, I shouldn't have. My whole body just shudders. Um, can you shed some light on that? Well, the idea is that our energy, if you will, is a bit step up from that which you and your society are used to. The particular channel before you is, in that sense, attuned to a very step-down version of my energy. But when it is, it is in proximity of particular individuals that are sensitive to it, you will, from your end, by the way, recreate a particular sympathetic vibration resonance to it, your version of it. Therefore, what I am saying is though you sense it is my energy, it is your creation of your version of my energy, again, perhaps sympathetically, resonantly synchronized. Does this make sense? So I do feel it. Um, yeah, so Andrew's giving off energy, which I feel. Um, no, I didn't understand what you said. The idea is enjoy it. Have a good time. <laughs> You are being acclimated in a sense. Your willingness to simply let it through and not judge it will make it seem more like, in your language, thrills than pain, resistance, or discomfort. You always only get a reality that you can handle. If you've created something by definition, you can handle it. If you judge that you cannot, you can create a type of resistance that will make it uncomfortable. To most directly answer your question, however, you, shall we say, have a lot in common with the stream we are presenting, and you are feeling that commonality. All right. Okay. Are you sure? I am. Thank you, Bashar. I have one more question. All right. Speak up, okay. though. Can you hear her back there? No. All right. Okay. Have them say yes. Okay, Bashar. Last week, I came to see you in uh, Madison. And I brought a friend with me who was really, really new to all of um, all this, you know, the, the new age, the metaphysics. Um, she, when we were driving home, she really got all, told me that she got a lot from it. And uh, I was wondering if that's like synchronicity and uh, if I was meant to, to take her there to begin her, to, you know, to start her with spiritual. Perhaps not so much that you were meant to, but your doing so was within her perfect timing. The idea of synchronicity is the recognition that all things are interwoven. That in fact, everything collectively speaking is literally part of one event. Therefore, everything fits. And anything within that one event, whether it seems consciously to have something to do with everything else, on some level does. It's all interlocked. So therefore, yes, it was synchronicity. And... We, being conscious of synchronicity and acting on the opportunities that it brings, take for granted that we only attract to these particular style of interactions those types of synchronicity. And therefore, we thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And you as well. Sharing. Sure. Yes. Greetings, Bashar. This is Debbie. And to you as well. Thank you. How's it going? Very well, thank you. I want to thank you first for the far -far formula that you gave me last session that we interacted. It was fabulous. All right. Um, I want to ask you now about Anima. Uh, I know that the channel, Andrew, uh, channeled her at one point in a session. And has she been with you lately? And how does she relate to you? The idea is Andrew's channeling of Anima, which is, by the way, another female individual upon my planet is quite rare. The reason is this. Anima, loosely speaking, is a counterpart of mine. This means that although we are two separate individual souls, we share, in that sense, the same oversoul. I, literally speaking, am the future self of another particular individual upon your planet. Therefore, her and I more directly relate to that other channel. This channel has another connection altogether. I, in this sense, are 
allowing this channel to become attuned in a particular way to strengthen what you would label his psychic abilities, to allow another individual altogether, another individual again upon my planet, to channel through him. Therefore, I am a temporary catalyst, a temporary conduit, if you will. But this does not mean that such interactions are not possible. From time to time, in a spontaneous fashion, anima will come through, not this evening. Also, when the other entity in that sense, loosely speaking, takes over these interactions, that does not mean you will no longer see my personality. Fragments of my personality will always be available, and from time to time, quite rarely, I will still come through in this form. Would you say that anima is the female aspect of you, or just someone totally different? A totally different being who, again, share, this becomes a bit sketchy. For now, the same oversoul, and both, loosely speaking, would correspond to the future self of the other channel. The future self of the channel before you will be the distinct being that will be channeling through this individual within the next several of your months. Excellent. Thank you very much, Fashar. And to you as well. Shedding. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would just like to ask you, uh, I would just like to ask you about some conflicts that are happening in my life right now, and I'd like to focus in on something. All right. Can you be concise and define? Uh, I'd rather not be. Uh... <laughs> well, all right. Just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel anything coming through? Not yet. First, you must open the door, then perhaps we can walk through. Uh, many things. Um, relationships, uh, relationships, plural. Is there a particular conflict that we can use as an example? Um, Otherwise, it will be quite general. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, husband, for one thing. Uh, oh. Job opportunity for another. All right. Let's take the husband. In what mm -hmm. way is there a conflict? Uh, just a communication at this point. Oh. Lack of communication. I'd like to know where to begin making changes in my life. Well, the idea, and we thank you for asking, is you will always begin with yourself. Much of what we had discussed at the beginning of this interaction relates to the fact that the only true change that you can make is in your own reality. Now, once you do so, everything changes. Other individuals seem to change when you are willing to change. This is because you exist on many levels. When you allow yourself to unfold at a slightly more expanded level, they also exist on these other levels. Therefore, you then interact with that portion of them if they choose to express such a portion. And they, although you've done all the changing, seem to have changed. So the idea is, begin by defining, first of all, in your own life, what excites you with integrity the most, what moves you. Then allow yourself to look at what you have created and from that determine what you believe. Once you've established what you believe and what excites you, you simply need to establish what a person who is already doing what excites you would need to believe and begin to explore those beliefs. Plug in the new beliefs and act according to the new beliefs. This will seem, in that sense, to recreate you into the new preferred person. Therefore, you will interact differently with other individuals. They will have a different reaction and seem to change. Does this make any sense? Um, the idea is you can never change another individual. You cannot be responsible for another individual. You can only be responsible for yourself and to another individual by being willing to be responsible for yourself. Individuals do not, shall we say, change their belief systems by being argued out of their old beliefs. They generally will be willing to change them when they see new alternatives in action that already work. Then they wonder, how can I do that too, if it is such a thing for them? But by trying to change another individual, you are not acknowledging who you are to begin with. Therefore, somewhat of a backward approach from our perspective. Do go on. That's all. Thank you very much. And to you as well. Shedding, over there. 
I have a question about definition. All uh, right. Many channelers I have I have heard have talked about the Confederation of Planets, the Federation of Planets, um, the Council of Twelve, and I think you have um, Association of Worlds. Can you explain the definition between the those? The idea is in some instances we are speaking of the same idea. In others we are speaking of tangential ideas which pipe into the association of which we speak. We prefer personally the terminology association for to us it is more descriptive. It is in no way, shape or form a hierarchy of existence. It is simply a networking body, a sharing body, the opportunity if you will to associate association then the same entities would be within the association many times again it is an interchangeable idea simply someone else's interpretation the name in and of itself is not important for each civilization has its own style of thinking own style of language and calls it what they will anyway when individuals channel through or two individuals upon your planet, they will bring through that in information with the memory banks, the, shall we say, language banks that they have and ascribe the meanings according to their own understandings. Thank you very much. And to you as well. Sharing. Yes. I'm coming. Don't go away. <laughs> All right. This summer, we just spent, we came back from a trip out to Arizona and Sedona in New Mexico. Oh, how exciting. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, I, my question for you is, when do I create, in creating my own reality, is there, are there forces outside of me? For instance, two places I was at, I felt absolutely in control of the world, and I felt very comfortable as though there was loving energy all around me, and I so hoped to meet you. I thought maybe you might fly over and say hi, Bethany, but there was another place I was in, where I went to take a shower in the campground at night and I felt like a trapped animal, kind of. I had been just looking up at the stars and thinking of the book Communion and thinking, I, I wondered to myself, oh God, here I am in enclosed in this area and I'm all by myself and I became very fearful. That night I had a terrible dream and I got very angry with myself because I want more than anything to have a connection with you. And I just wondered in the times when I felt the wonderful loving energy all around me, when I would just relax and allowed it to happen. Were you there or anybody from? The idea is more this, and it ties in almost directly to how we began this interaction. When everything was fine and dandy, you were on top of the world. The first sign of a little bit of negativity. What happened? You can use that as well. It was an opportunity in that sense to look at particular beliefs. Why am I fearing? What is the bottom line belief I have to be fearing in this situation? Secondly, as we have said, you then went into self-judgment. Now, you need not compound this idea by now, judging yourself for judging for being afraid. You can simply begin now to utilize that situation as a service. In other words, what must I believe, first of all, go in order, to have judged myself for falling short of my desires? And look at that belief. Then, back it up. What did that dream mean to me? And look at that. Back it up one more step. What was I believing at that moment? And may we make a suggestion that that particular thing may have been that you believe you create your reality on 98%. And that other 2% are the little guys who can slip in there and get you. <laughs> but that is all right. That is all right. Because now you know that. And as we had said, you could not change it till you did. So begin to look at any belief, again, that you have that you do not prefer, and use it. A sparkling opportunity, even in retrospect. Does this make sense? Yes. We do not, in the confines of your time parameters of this interaction, have the time to go into the specifics. But if you will simply listen to the main ideas we are sharing and allow yourself to be self-reflective, you will glean much. And again, this bottom line negativity stuff is the last of what you need transform in order to be on top of the world all the time. So go for it, as you say. 
Can I ask one other quick question? You can ask. <laughs> a very dear friend has told me, music is my life, and she told me that in a reading, I would guess, that I had chosen to come here to serve in music with my vehicle. I don't always feel... The idea is it is one of them. And if you will allow yourself to discover one other primary one, there will be, shall we say, a marriage of the two. So therefore, that frustration that you may create is simply lack of trust, or shall we say, trust in a negative. Begin to look at what else in that service-oriented approach excites you. All right. Thank you very much. And you as well. Sharing. Um, greetings. And to you as well. Thank you. Is there anyone uh, in the Democratic Party who can overthrow the people who control government now? The idea is this. You are beginning to speak of affairs of your planet. And it is your planet. Therefore, in that sense, we do not interfere. Also understand that truly everyone, all of you do create your own reality. So though there are trends, though there are momentums, nothing's etched in stone. There is truly, truly no such thing as a prediction of the future. For there are many probable futures. What you get when you get a prediction is a sensing of the energy in this moment, of what seems to be most likely, what has a particular degree of momentum behind it. But understand, simply the rendering of the prediction can change the outcome of the prediction because it gives the conscious awareness to individuals to decide, I wish to allow that to play out, I wish to not allow that to play out. Every, every, every experience you ever have is in the now moment. Here and now are the only place and time there truly are. So therefore, when you speak about the past, you are truly not remembering a past. You are recreating a perception of a past in the present right now. Same thing happens with a prediction or when you future, you are sensing from what is right here, right now, what that will be. The very long-winded answer to your question is it has not yet been written. And the idea is there are many probabilities. What we will share is that this is, as we have said, the transformational age. Things will shake up a bit because many people associate throughout the ages of your planet the only way they will accept great change is by shaking down many structures. But an alternate belief that change can be smooth, transformative, is also taking root. Therefore, though great changes there will be, only certain individuals will, in that sense, experience them as catastrophic. Others simply will not be in the place and the time of the catastrophic events, will be aware, perhaps, of them, but it will not touch you. And the idea is it will be your decision to decide if you believe a particular future is etched in stone, you may attract the more catastrophic effect. But if you believe that it can go either way, and you believe you prefer it to go harmoniously, you will attract that effect. What we can share is that from our perspective on mass, your mass consciousness has decided not to blow yourself up by nuclear means. So from our perspective, this is not one of the possibilities. Does this help? Yes. Are you sure? Thank you very much. <laughs> and you as well. Time for two more sharing. Well, all right. Number one. Sure. Yes. Proceed. Sure. I found myself thinking of setting up a center on a lake in West Central Connecticut. Well, go right ahead. Yes. I was, <laughs> does this coincide with anything that's being planned from your perspective? In a sense, loosely speaking, there would be the opportunity for particular interactions were such a thing to emerge, yes. Thank you. And you as well. 
Number two. Thank you, sir. My name is Jill. Hello, Jill. This is um, my first time listening to you, and I love the energy that I'm getting. This is my first time as well. And I say so because we view all as the first time. Therefore, upon our planet, we do not even, in that sense, truly grasp your notion of boredom. Do proceed. <laughs> I was wondering, um, I, Speak I, up. I've done a lot of learning and growing over the summer, and I was wondering if you saw any relationships coming my way. The idea, again, is this. If you approach the idea of attracting a relationship, as a matter of needing that relationship to make yourself complete, you have a little paradox in there. And that is you will only attract a reflection of your already feeling incomplete. If you will recognize that the primary relationship is your relationship to yourself, nurture that. Recognize you are already whole already. Then you will attract a reflection of that. Attract a relationship? Yes. What type and style of a reflection that relationship will be, will be up to you. Does this help? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Do we have time for one more? Yeah. Uh, I would like to know, um, it's said that we have been seated by extraterrestrial a long time ago. Is in a sense. In a sense. Is it possible to trace your lineage back, or has it been such a time span that we've all become part of one. It is possible in that sense to trace a particular line of your lineage, but understand something in no uncertain terms. When we had shared that you are made in the image and likeness of God, God is multidimensional, infinite, and eternal. Therefore, so are you. Therefore, if you want to take it quite literally, you're from everywhere. You've done it all. Therefore, nowhere in particular. But there are within the roots and branches of your lineages particular significances within a particular given life. Do you have a particular sense of any connection whatsoever? Uh, lately there's been a lot of, um, say, Native American coming through to me. It's been going over a period of time. Um, I don't know if that has too much to do with it. Well, in a sense, what we mean more literally is, are you aware of any extraterrestrial societies? I can't say I'm actually aware of anyone in particular, but I... Have any come to your awareness, even through the reading of your book, watching of your television? Uh, from some of the tapes I've listened to, there seems to be a, a likeness or a draw to something that seems somewhat familiar, but I'm not quite sure. All right. All we are immediately getting with the limited information we have shared is connections to a particular star system labeled the Pleiades. Look it up. Have a good time. I know of it. I've seen it in the sky. All right. Is there one, uh, just one quick question. In viewing the Pleiades, is there one way I can do it rather well? Is there some type of an instrument, a good telescope or something? That is one way. Well, my wife and I are both interested, and I would like to find something that would give me a good observation. There are many of these ideas upon your planet, observatories, and places you can go for the physicalized viewing, but understand that their society also to a high degree is telempathic. Therefore, you can get in touch rather than going without by going within. Begin there. You will be assisted from the other end, so it will not seem so difficult. Thank you. And to you as well. At this timing, again, allow us to unconditionally love and thank you for your willingness to begin to allow your consciousness to expand, to allow yourself to even think it is possible to live and create consciously according to preference. Obviously, I need not tell you that it is an option to create unconsciously according to on preference. You have seen many examples of it. You are perfect creators. Even when you create misery, it is perfect misery. The idea is you can begin to consciously apply this creatorhood.
and for your willingness to even consider it. I thank you, wish you a most ecstatic dream lives and life dreams and a fond and loving good evening. Oh. How'd it go?